Good morning and a warm welcome to St Mary's at Garthus. Uh, this morning I'm leading the service, I'm Carol and I'm joined by Reverend Jonathan. So let us just have a moment of quiet as we come before God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has made us light to the world. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we come before God to confess the wrongdoings that we've done this past week. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 8. It's about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the, mess now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer. So he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from this earth. The eunuch, the eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this is? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. 
Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now a Gospel reading from John chapter 15. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Alleluia. Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for, at what, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done. My Father is glorified by this. You bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. May I speak in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Up until very recently, I knew very little about vines. I've had guided tours of vineyards, of course, but to be frank, I think I was probably more interested in the product of the vine rather than the vine itself. And then we moved to Garforth and in our little garden, we inherited a vine. When we did move in, it was covered in grapes, although they were quite small and very bitter. But when autumn came and the fruit had gone and the leaves disappeared, we were left with a straggly, woody plant. And it was clear that although it had seemed to be covered in fruit in summer, it was only a few branches that were actually bearing fruit. So we've cut it right back and only time will tell if we get any more fruit this summer. Well, I may know very little about vines, but most Jews in the first century will have done. They'll certainly know more than me anyway. For one thing, grapes were important to the Israel economy. The climate of Israel is ideal for growing grapes. And another thing, the grapevine had always been the symbol of the nation of Israel. In fact, the symbol of the grapevine was on Israeli coins right up until the time that they were conquered by Rome. And the image of a vine is one that is found throughout the Old Testament as a reference to the nation of Israel itself. And that brings us on to John's Gospel. You may have noticed that John's Gospel is different to the other three in many ways. But one striking difference is that John doesn't really record any of the parables that are found in the other three. Instead, he uses images and metaphors in the things that Jesus says. And more specifically, he records seven I am sayings things that Jesus says that he is. All these sayings are based on everyday imagery and would have been relevant to those hearing them. So for example, right after feeding 5,000 people, he told the disciples, I am the bread of life. And when Jesus and his disciples were at the temple for the celebration of the festival of lights, he said, I am the light of the world. When they were looking over the hills where shepherds were tending their flocks, he said, I am the gate. And then followed that with, I am the good shepherd. 
And just before Jesus rose Lazarus, his friend from the dead, he declared, I am the resurrection and the life. At the Last Supper, Jesus warned his apostles about his coming arrest and death, and they couldn't understand what he meant. Finally, Thomas exclaimed, We don't know where you're going, Jesus. How can we possibly know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Jesus used everyday events, everyday sayings, as a springboard for teaching eternal truths. Our reading from John's Gospel this morning is Jesus' final I am statement. I am the true vine. He's speaking to the disciples as they walk from the upper room where they've just shared the Last Supper on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, passing by many vineyards on the way. It's his final teaching moment, so we must consider that this statement is fundal, fundamental to what Jesus is revealing. The key word that Jesus uses in this metaphor of the vine is abide. Jesus says that abiding is necessary to produce any fruit. He also says that not abiding means that the branch will be useless. So what does it mean to abide in Christ? Jesus made it a little bit more specific when he said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. Well, the dictionary definition of abide means to live with, to remain or to stay somewhere. So to abide in Christ means we spend time focusing in on him and his words. It means to spend time reading, studying and meditating on the Bible. Because where God's word abides, we are abiding in Christ. It means living deliberately by the power of the Holy Spirit to witness to the truth of Jesus in everything we say and everything we do. It means following Jesus more nearly. The branch is attached to the vine and in abiding we must be continually attached to Jesus. We're told to abide because it's something we can do or not do. It's a choice. We have to pay, play a part. So in practical terms, we have a daily choice to make, to spend time in prayer, to open the Bible and read, to focus on Christ. Because if we fail to see that abiding is our life's work, we miss the message of what Jesus is saying. While fruit comes from abiding, a good harvest does also require effort on the part of the vine dresser. Jesus said, I am the true vine, my father is the gardener, the vine dresser. The vine provides life and the vine dresser provides what is needed for a good harvest. God is willing to provide the expertise and the effort to cultivate and prune his vineyard. The grapes on our vine last year I was still rather small and bitter, and I'm not sure if it will bear fruit at all this year. You'll see a picture next to me now of our vine at this moment. Greater fruit bearing on our vine will take the efforts and the expertise of someone who knows what they're doing, so probably not me. The good news is that God is willing to provide that expertise and the effort to cultivate and prune his vineyard we need to allow ourselves to be cultivated and pruned by him, to be open, to be changed and transformed by his love. Jesus says that a branch cannot bear fruit on its own. It must be connected to the vine, which receives the moisture and nutrients it needs from the roots that go deep into the earth. And the only way for the vine to bear a maximum amount of grapes is it for, for it to have many branches? So we're not a single branch. We're part of a bigger vine, a community of other believers. So we need to abide with each other in the same way that we abide with Jesus. 
as much as that seems hard at times. Because together we are church and together, rooted in Jesus, we too can bear much fruit. So the final I am statement of Jesus on the night he was arrested gave both a promise and a command. As the vine, Jesus promises all the nourishment we need for life. As the vine dresser, God does all that is needed to give us fruitful lives. As the branches, our part is to abide, to remain firmly fixed to Jesus. If we abide in his love, we can experience his joy to the full. Amen. Our hymn this morning is Will You Come and Follow Me? Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we say together, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the vine, we are the branches. Keep us abiding in you. We pray for your church and all Christian people. We pray for all Christian leaders and for all those who teach and guard the faith. Help us to allow ourselves to be cultivated by God as we seek to bear fruit for your kingdom in everything we do and everything we say. Help us to live deliberately through the power of the Holy Spirit and discover all that you are calling us to be and all that you are calling us to do. Prune and tend your church that it may bear fruitful disciples of your grace. God of love and power, hear our prayer. Jesus, the Ethiopian official, sought to understand your good news. 
expand the hearts and minds of all in authority to pursue truth and justice. We pray for all places where there is conflict, division and oppression, and particularly hold up to you those areas of the world where people are fearful of lifting your name on high for fear of persecution. In our own country, we pray for all in government at both national and local level and all who have power and influence. We pray for discernment and judgment in their decision-making and shrewdness in their planning. Bring reason for all people to rejoice. God of love and power, hear our prayer. Jesus, your love sets our hearts ablaze. Open the hearts of all people to reflect this love in ways that nurture and foster character. Lord, we know that there are many young people who are searching for meaning and clarity, and we pray that we might be instruments of helping them find their way to you. Strengthen all who support parenting and provide guidance for the young. Guide us by your spirit to discover where you are working and help us to join in the building of your kingdom and anoint us afresh to make disciples of all ages in your name. God of love and power, hear our prayer. Jesus, your love precedes us and we respond with adoration and praise. We pray for those bowed down with grief, fear or sickness. We pray for the lonely and isolated. We pray for the bereaved and those who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones. Bring your peace to the lives of all who need to know your love and healing to those in need. Raise us to delight in your loving purposes through good times and bad. God of love and power, hear our prayer. Jesus, we are made for your love. May we all come to abide with you forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so to our notices. Um, we had a good annual meeting last week. Um, lots of people were involved, either here in church, via Zoom and on phone links. So it's the first time we've ever done it that way and it worked very well. So thank you for all those who attended. Um, also following a good meeting last week, we are hoping to be able to start a new Sunday club for our small children. Um, a new name is to be given, um, is to be decided on soon. Um, we're just at the planning stages, but if you can help with planning, admin, running sessions or assisting, please let Reverend Jane know. Um, our next collection for the food bank will be on Monday 10th of May, 2pm to 3pm. If you can't make it then, please drop donations off at the rectory. Thy Kingdom Come is a global prayer movement that invites all Christians around the world to pray from Ascension to Pentecost, to Pentecost, 13th of May to the 23rd of May, for more people to come to know Jesus 
And so for more information, please see, stay connected. We've got two resources. Firstly, a prayer journal, um, a really lovely resource for adults and older teenagers uh, covering the 11 days of prayer. So why not get yourself one and maybe a gift for someone. And we also have a family adventure map. So again, if you've got young children, please contact the church. Um, the Ascension Day service is on Thursday 13th of May at 7.30 and it's in church and online. And finally, Reverend Jane is taking part in a challenge to walk 300,000 steps in May in aid of Christian Aid. If you would like to support her by donating to this important charity, please see Stay Connected. So we come to our closing prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among, among you and remain with you always. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead of work within you, go in peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.